before we discuss the subject at hand today, which is Adam Hlozek and some other West Ham related news, I just want to go back to yesterday's uh, video and in particular some of the comments um, that you left because if you're kind enough to leave comments on it, at least I can do is, is sort of respond to them and read them. Um, and there was lots of people commented yesterday. I mean, it must have been a, a topic that was of interest because I had twice as many comments as... I usually get on a daily video, certainly. There was a constant theme on there, though, and a number of people mentioned this, and it was that you felt that Jesse Lingard, or his brother, certainly, was almost happy to burn bridges with West Ham because he was going to go and sign for Newcastle and, and, and take the money on there. Um, I just really want to come back on that one quickly. Uh, also, now, since I did the video yesterday, another story has emerged that Jesse Lingard is not going to sign a contract at Manchester United. And also that Jesse Lingard is received interest from Atletico Madrid and, and Barcelona, two La Liga giants. And, well, you, you have to assume that if Barcelona came calling, certainly, that most players, most players would go and most players would join. Um, but it's the Newcastle one that gets me, because whilst I understand that Jesse Lingard would join Barcelona, you can't also then make the argument that he would join Newcastle, because they're chalk and cheese. What we know, there's a, there's a few things we know about Jesse Lingard. One of them is that he he highly covets an England place. He, England means an awful lot to this guy. And I think if he goes to Newcastle... OK, there's two things. If he goes to Newcastle now... Um, he ain't getting into England this season. He just won't. And then, obviously, you've got the World Cup coming up. Um, then there's this other dynamic of there appear to be a number of clubs, I've all Premier League clubs, who don't want to do business with Newcastle. This is a video for a different day, and I will do the video for a different day, but there's a storm brewing, a massive storm is brewing. Um, in its most condensed form, uh, the chief executive of the Premier League has had to resign over Newcastle over the Premier League basically um, ratifying their fit and proper persons process so as uh, the Saudi sovereign investment fund could take over Newcastle. Basically, Premier League clubs aren't happy with it. Um, and, someone's, and, and the head guy at the Premier League has lost his job over this. As we understand, there have been some clandestine meetings between a lot of the Premier League clubs who are saying we're not going to do business with Newcastle. They want to shut Newcastle out and shut Newcastle down. Now, don't get me wrong... Um, I, I, I totally meant what I said in terms of they have, because of the Saudi investment funds, there's some human rights issues there. I think some of the decision from the Premier League is that, but I also think that a lot of it is seeing some money coming in and wanting to, Premier League wanting a closed shop. So I think they're possibly they're using the human rights issue as an excuse not to let Newcastle in. It's a video for another day. Also, we the government are about to rule on some football governance as well. So there's going to be a massive decision from the government following the European Super League, which is going to massively alter the landscape of, of English football. So I want to, we'll deal with that when it happens. Um, but my point is, at the moment, a lot of the Premier League clubs are not happy with what's happened at the Premier League, are not happy with uh, Newcastle. I'd be very surprised if Manchester United sold Jesse Lingard to Newcastle. Um OK, so that's that. A couple of people made the point that Jesse Ling that Manchester United wouldn't sell Jesse Lingard to West Ham in January because West Ham are direct rivals. Great point. I hadn't considered that at all. Uh, why would Man United want to strengthen West Ham? And, and, and uh, it's as good an argument as I've heard, actually. So, uh, yeah, I, I think maybe you're looking at January. But my point is, if Jesse Lingard does want to sign for Newcastle, he is going to sign for Newcastle. It will very much be a money decision. I, I think he can wave goodbye to his England place. I mean, almost permanently, for the reasons that I stated yesterday, and I do think give Emil Smith Rowe another six months. I just don't think you get it in. Phil Foden six months better. Um, Grealish, all these other players. I didn't even mention Mason Mount yesterday. I just don't think it's happening. You have to assume as well that those wide positions, whoever, when Man United eventually do change their manager, then someone's going to come in. They're going to get a tune out of Sancho, and you'd have to assume that Rashford. Um, it's going to improve as well. I just don't find, think there's any space for Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard has one chance to get back in that England team, and that is to compete at the top level in the Premier League and do what he did last season. Uh, he's not going to get into the England team fighting a relegation battle. That's just not going to happen. And for that reason, I'm not sure about the Newcastle link. Uh, anyway, uh, um, anyway that, that's that. 
what what is also interesting, by the way, is that I don't know if you heard yesterday. Glenn Hoddle was on Talk Sport. Glenn Hoddle said that Declan Rice is the best player in the Premier League at the moment. Um, I thought that was great. I, I think, and he said the best player in the Premier League, bar none. Uh, I know. I, I think there's a, there's a fluidity to that. I think that will change. I think there'll be a point where you could, if Lukaku starts scoring uh, regularly again, you might say he's the best player in the Premier League, and um, many many different players. Um, you know, Kevin De Bruyne is is more than capable of being the best player in the Premier League again. Salah, whatever. But I think at the moment you look at the last month or two, and I think it's a fair shout actually, and, and certainly nice to see Declan getting some of the uh, some of the love that he. That he previously didn't get us as West Ham fans had to justify um, why Declan Rice was so good. Anyway, back to the subject at hand, and this has come straight from the Adam Hlozik one, has come straight from the One Football app, and there's a number of stories on there today. Uh, there's one about David Moyes wanting to sign uh, Simeone, not Diego Simeone, obviously. Not going to sign his successor, is he? But uh, his son. Um, there's uh, basically a story about David Sullivan appointing his sons to the board. Um, there's a, a, another article about James Tarkowski and, and West Ham. Um, and also the, the normal stuff that's on the One Football app, Wolves preview, suggesting they're going to unleash a Daniel Pedence against us, who we know is a very quick and a very tricky player. Um, but one of the main stories on there at the moment is the Daniel Kratinsky smoothing the way um, for Adam Hlozek to join West Ham. Uh, loads of stories on the One Football app. The link is in the description below. Fantastic app. I'm just getting all the West Ham news put into one place. You tell the app who you support. It's free. And I'll tell you what, on match day, on match day, which is very, very soon, of course, um, uh, an hour before kickoff, it will give you all the lineups and everything you need to know. And best of all, it's free. Click the link below. Um, the Adam Hlozek uh, uh, one. Okay, this is something, again, I hadn't really thought of. Loan. A loan deal first. Now, whether that's an obligation to buy or an option to buy afterwards, I don't know. But I hadn't ever really considered the loan option. And I guess I hadn't considered it because I wasn't sure how attractive that would be to Sparta Prague. You can sort of understand that. This is one of their um, one of their young up-and-coming players. And um, you, you think, well, maybe they're not going to want to lose him on loan. If they're going to want to do anything, they'll get a big transfer fee. They can then go and buy and reinforce their squad. However, when we've got someone on our board who's also on their board... Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work <laughs> long term. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's legal, um, but it doesn't seem quite right. Um, anyway, whilst we're there and whilst there's a loophole there, I guess we'll look to exploit it. Um, could we then? Could we basically? Could West Ham approach Sparta Prague and say, "Excuse me, can we have him on loan?" It's basically be Daniel Kratinsky phoning himself. Hello, Daniel. Yes, it's me. Um, can we have Can we have Adam Hlozek on loan? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, I guess the deal is is easily done there. I think it makes sense for all parties. Um, this one, I see. I, I, what am I talking about? What utter nonsense! I think it makes sense for West Ham. I think it's a terrible deal. Uh, for Sparta Prague, um, as, I, as I've said before, I'm not in. I don't want to stitch other clubs up. <laughs> Maybe Tottenham, but I don't want. I don't want to stitch. Generally, don't want to stitch other clubs up in the way we do our business. I think us as a club have been stitched up so many times. I, I don't like to think that we do it um, to other people. Um, this is good though. This is good for West Ham, and it, it's a it's a try before you buy unless there's an obligation. Now he's not been in the best scoring form this season. It has to be said, um, but he, he is a very very good player. He's he shares the same. Did you know this? He shares the same agent as um, Thomas Suchek. You may well have known that. That's another reason to make you think this might happen. In fact, everything's pointing towards it. He's got the rights. I mean, he's six foot two. He's fast. He can play off either wing, cut inside, good with both feet, uh, good finisher, powerful player, pacey enough. Almost ticks all the boxes you would see as a sort of David Moyes type player. And if there's no, um, if there's no, no need to pay the fee up front first, then. It's a signing that we can make. I think the only question on this one is whether David Moyes wants him. I mean, that's literally the only thing. Does Moyes want him? Does Moyes rate him? Because you don't get the impression anymore that David Moyes is is going to have any players forced upon him. Anyone that comes in, David Moyes wants. Um, I see lots of reasons why we'd get him. I see t there are two things that sort of hang around in the back of my mind. Not just him. And the two players that we've covered 
on, on this video in terms of Jesse Lingard and Hlozek. These are players that are already known to us. These are players that we were already scouting. One of them has already played for West Ham, for goodness sake. I do wonder if this is how we're going to conduct our business. Not what the point of bringing Rob Newman is, because obviously Rob Newman's the new uh, director of recruitment. I understand the point of him, but the necessity of him immediately, and immediately now. Um, because... Well, we already knew, as I say, we already knew about these players. It makes, you know, what's what's Rob Newman going to do? I don't mean, to, as I say, I don't mean to belittle his role. Far from it. I, I think there's a need for him. But it just, it would almost indicate that actually Rob Newman's for the future. Actually, now, David Moyes is still relying on, on the contacts he already had, his own intuition, uh, and players that, that are already known to him. I And for that reason, I, I just find it, I find it difficult to believe that we would push as hard as we have to bring Rob Newman in and then not use him. So, um, look, I don't know. It's all up in the air. We're going to see lots and lots of links coming up. Undoubtedly, we're going to do something in January. We really are. Um, and I, I don't mind. I've, I've never minded about loans, as I've said on numerous occasions. I, I think, you know, Thomas Suchek, Jesse Lingard are, are two of the most successful loans you are ever likely to see. Um, I mean, they really are. So, I, I don't feel you have to spend... 20 million look look flat look Vlasic cost 18 million um and and as, as I suggest I think you'll come good I really do but spending the money on a full-time purchase doesn't guarantee you instant success um he's not been an instant success I think he will be in the long term but he's not been an instant success and we put a down payment down of 18 million um Jesse Lingard and Thomas Suchek we loaned initially and they were both an instant success so I don't care what the composition of the deal is with who we bring in in January. It just has to work and it has to be good. And I'm, as I say, uh, if it's Lozek on loan, all good. I just know we need extra bodies in there. going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. But um, I keep arguing I keep arguing with myself on it. I, it's believable on one hand, um, not so much on the other. Anyway, um, we'll be back tomorrow. Lots of videos tomorrow. Patreon breakfast. Uh, obviously, we've got the build-up show. Uh, an hour and five minutes before kickoff, which is what one fifty-five. Um, we got um, we got the player rating. We we'll probably do the player ratings the next day on Patreon because uh, Gio's going to the game, so he'll be back for that. And of course, uh, we got the watch along with Charlie during the game, and I'll be back uh, with the post-match review straight away after. Possibly a little cheeky video on this channel on the morning of the game. Just you know, just having having a little look at what's going to happen. Get the juices flowing. Get us all in the mood uh, for the Wolves game. Nice to have football back again, isn't it? Look, really looking forward to that. Anyway, I'll catch up with you tomorrow.